Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Shelley and this is a, another video in a mini series of videos all to do with H. pylori, my experience with it. And this particular video is going to talk about all of the things that I've done food wise, lifestyle wise um, and anything that's helped me to get through the infection and recover from the infection. So I want to be able to share all of that with you because there was very little information for me online at the time and I wanted to let you know how I've healed and it's now been three months since I finished my eradication therapy. It's actually just over three months since I finished my triple therapy treatment which consisted of two antibiotics and a PPI to eradicate the Helicobacter pylori bacterial infection that was living in my stomach and I wanted to share with you how I'm now feeling, how I'm getting on and all of the things that I did, things that I did to help me get back to this particular point. I'm really pleased to say that I am practically healed and it has been just over three months since I finished treatment so I'm really pleased about that and I wanted to be able to share all of the things with you to help you recover as quickly and as calmly as possible. I use the word calmly because during my infection flare-up, during treatment and after eradication therapy, I found it really stressful. Um, there were a lot of tears and a lot of sleepless nights. Um, at this point, I just wanted to put a little disclaimer in, as I have done in my other videos, just to say this is purely my personal experience with H. pylori. I'm not a medical professional and I'm not trained to give any information about how to deal with it. This is purely how I've dealt with it and I'm hoping that maybe it might help somebody along the way. If you haven't already, then please go and watch video one, which talks about the build-up of my infection and how it all started. Video two then talks about how I was diagnosed and the treatment that I was provided. And this video is gonna be talking about um, foods and lifestyle factors, things that helped me cope and then heal after the eradication therapy. So as I mentioned in the first video, whilst I was experiencing certain digestive issues, I started to become intolerant to certain foods, things like lactose, oats, and I wasn't able to eat anything that was like prebiotic, probiotic, kefir, sauerkraut, kimchi, and that kind of thing. So I knew there was something going on in my stomach, but I just didn't know what it was. So those particular foods, I had to just keep eliminating them from my diet as advised by a dietitian, which I wasn't overly okay with because I wasn't born with these intolerances, but I am aware that along the way throughout life, we can become intolerant. But for me, I wanted to investigate that and to find out why. And then when I got to the flare up stage, which was last September 2022, I was literally unable to have alcohol, caffeine. I, I cut those out of my diet completely because if I had them, I would flare up even further. During the flare up, which was between September last year and February this year, I avoided caffeine, alcohol, hot food, spicy food, and I had a lot of water. I, I started to make sure that I was drinking enough water all day, every day, just to try and help me kind of um, get along, basically. And then when I finally found out that I had this infection, by the time I got to that point, anything that I was eating was making me feel ill. So I got to the infection point and then I was put on the medication. Once I'd had the eradication therapy, I wasn't sure whether it had worked and you do still feel, well, you feel groggy from the medication anyway. It's a lot of medicine to have, which is needed to target the bacteria. So I was okay with that. And I knew that I needed to just give this some time. Not only that, but I also needed to help my body to detox. And so with your body's natural detoxification process, your liver just needs a little bit more support. So I would incorporate little different things to help that along. During the infection, I did not feel hungry. I felt very sick. I didn't feel hungry at all. And I actually had a horrible like metallic taste in my mouth that just got worse towards when I got diagnosed. I maintained having just three small meals a day just to keep my weight going because every time I stopped eating, my weight would decrease. So I was just wanting to make sure that I was having nutrients 
and just trying to keep my body going basically. During the medication therapy, I maintained having the three small meals per day and I also tried to rest as much as I possibly could during that week just to give my body the chance to fight the infection and allow the medicine to do its work. As I said before, once I'd finished the eradication therapy, so the two antibiotics alongside the PPI, as soon as I finished that, I still felt quite groggy. There was a lot of medicine that I had to take. So I knew there was a little bit of time where I would have to wait for that to come out of my system completely. Even though I was taking the PPI for an additional three weeks, I wanted to try and support my system as much as possible. As soon as I had finished taking all three medicines together, I just wanted to start doing some gentle exercise. I could feel there was a lot of medicine still in my body, so I wanted to do some yoga. Um, I just followed some free yoga videos on YouTube and just did that for the next two to three weeks. Some of the things that I did um, up until I finished taking the PPI was a lot of rest, a lot of relaxation, and because the PPI prevents your stomach from producing acid to allow your stomach lining to heal, I didn't put a lot of pressure on myself to feel hungry straight away. I knew I wasn't going to feel hungry for a little while. I knew there was a healing process that needed to, to be done naturally. And so I was very patient with my stomach and I just hoped that I would eventually start to feel hungry again. About two weeks after I finished the PPI medication, that's when I started to get very subtle hunger pangs again. So. Once I'd finished the PPI, it was around two weeks, but I maintained having three small meals a day and drinking six to eight glasses of water a day. Some of the things that I completely avoided, which I think helped my healing process, were first and foremost, stress. Stress suppresses the stomach acid and really you need some stomach acid in order to absorb nutrients, to digest your food properly and having stress in your system and the stress hormones it's just going to knock your system even further. H. pylori causes internal inflammation and not to panic or worry you, um, I definitely felt very inflamed, more so in my head um, than anywhere else, obviously in my stomach but it affected everything and it does take quite some time for that inflammation to go. Um, I would say it's probably taken the full three months from me finishing medication for inflammation to have completely gone. That might be because I was having to take iron medication not long after I finished all of my eradication treatment. However, I think having an anti-inflammatory diet and avoiding stress completely are the main factors as to why I healed as quick as I did. Secondly, I avoided taking ibuprofen. Ibuprofen is a stomach irritating anti, it's actually an anti-inflammatory, but it, it does irritate the lining of your stomach. And so I have completely avoided taking anything like that. If I needed to take any pain relief, I actually took a child's uh, liquid paracetamol, but I tried to avoid taking anything unless absolutely needed. Um, I also, avoided tea and coffee. Um, I'd already cut caffeine out because I couldn't tolerate it at all. But decaf tea and coffee also were off the menu while I was healing. Tea just seemed to make things very dry in the stomach and coffee is acidic and I needed to avoid anything acidic, anything hot, anything spicy and so that was off the diet as well. I also avoided um, fizzy drinks um, and anything sugary or salty. So anything sugary or salty seemed to really irritate my stomach while it was very raw. Um, it was almost like I was having a massive sugar rush if I had sweets or anything fizzy. So I completely avoided them. And then I also didn't put any extra salt and I avoided meals with um, salt added in so that I could allow my stomach just to have a little bit of a break. Processed foods were completely off the menu, takeaways and processed meats, anything like that really. It just weighed 
far too heavy on my stomach. It wasn't even that I was trying to avoid these foods. I did try. I tried to add in something and very quickly realised that actually my stomach wasn't ready for that yet. Things that I was able to eat and drink that I believe helped me to heal quicker were anti-inflammatory foods and drinks. So salmon, green tea, tuna, plants, lots and lots of plant-based foods, spinach, kale, broccoli. Broccoli became practically my main meal. Um, I was eating a lot of that every day um, and that really helped to keep things nice and calm in my stomach. Something that I was able to drink after a few weeks, um, I started to incorporate ginger tea, but just cool. So cool ginger tea and that just sort of got the digestive juices going again without causing any harm to my very raw stomach. But also ginger is an anti-inflammatory and I believe it is an antibacterial. Um, so I, I had a lot of ginger and a lot of ginger tea. Something else that I also had quite a lot of was cooled green tea, but it had to be decaf. So cooled decaf green tea with a teaspoon of Manuka honey. Manuka honey is antibacterial, antiviral and really, really nice in your stomach. When you drink that and decaf green tea, it was just so relieving. It was lovely. Sometimes I put ice cubes in, but I didn't like putting too things that were too cold into my diet because anything too hot, too cold, it just caused a little bit of a, uh, an irritation. So just cooled decaf green tea with a bit of Manuka honey. That's a really nice one that I added into my diet. Having a large amount of antibiotics, I really was keen to have some probiotics put back into my body. And yogurt, natural yogurt, is actually a really good probiotic. And so I added that into my diet where possible. I was aware that I had struggled with lactose before the infection. However, I'm really pleased to say that if I now have yogurt, with lactose in, I don't have any issues at all, which is incredible. I also included a prebiotic powder, which was provided by a nutritional therapist called PHGG. I think you can get that without being um, under a nutritional therapist. Always read the label if you are going to purchase something like that, but that's something that I added just half a teaspoon in my hot drink in the morning and that was really nice just to add in a little bit of a, a prebiotic uh, just to get the bacterial diversity back again and I also included um, some liver supporting teas so I had cooled boiled um, milk thistle dandelion and nettle teas I did try having a bit of peppermint up until I would say about 10 weeks after treatment. I couldn't have peppermint. It was a bit too irritating. However, I can now have peppermint. Um, so yeah, peppermint and peppermint tea are really good for digestion. Just going back to the anti-inflammatory foods and drinks. There's a lot of information on the internet about anti-inflammatory foods and drinks. So everybody's different with what they are um, able to eat, what they want, what they don't want. And so I just relied on that really. Um, I just incorporated what foods I wanted off the anti-inflammatory foods lists and added in things along the way when I could tolerate it. I didn't have it if my stomach was reacting, but then over time I've gradually increased little amounts. And um, obviously now I'm pretty much able to eat anything that I want to off those lists. Some of the things that I did in my lifestyle to help support me heal were, I tried to get earlier nights where possible and I tried to get as much sleep as I possibly could. But given the fact that I've been so stressed, I wasn't prepared to put myself under any more pressure. And so if I wasn't able to sleep, then I just rested. Um, and I think that's really important. If you try and force yourself to do something, you're just going to resist. So trying to rest and getting as much sleep as, as I possibly could really, really benefited. Something else that I also was able to do once I was off all medication was to do some gentle walking every day. I couldn't quite manage um, half an hour, which is what I wanted to do. Um, a walk around the block really took the puff out of me. So I needed to just do it gently, start slowly, and then just build up as your body is allowing you to do so. 
Other things that I did that allowed me to heal were I tried to space out some time in between my meals. So if I had my breakfast at say eight o'clock, I tried to leave four hours um, until I had my lunch. And then I tried to leave at least four hours until I had my tea. Because I was low on iron, I did need to have a couple of snacks here and there. But leaving those gaps allowed my body to process the food. It's going to be slow. It's going to take your body a bit longer to digest. So I just tried to allow my body a little bit of a break in between meals. I also tried to make sure that I left a big gap overnight. I know it's called an overnight fast, but I wasn't intentionally trying to do that. I knew that by giving my body a proper break overnight, it was going to let it heal. So I had my last meal at say, I had my last bit of food um, no later than about eight o'clock in the evening. And then I would have breakfast at around eight o'clock the next day. So a window about 12 hours overnight really helps your stomach to process everything um, and digest properly. A couple of other things that I did were I got outside in natural sunlight as much as I possibly could, as early in the morning as I could, to try and get the sunlight in my eyes. And that would basically help reset the body clock. And I tried to bear some arms and legs just to get some natural vitamin D into my body. I also would have um, one or two very cool baths in the week, not using too many bath salts. So just a very tiny amount of either Epsom salts or Himalayan salts or Dead Sea salts, just to try and help the body's detox system, just to try and restore some of the magnesium levels and also just to help me try and relax and get back into a nice calm rhythm. Meditation and affirmations really, really helped in this situation. I would just basically put a YouTube video on of affirmations or I would watch a YouTube video on meditation or I actually trained in Reiki myself. So I started to do some more Reiki once I was feeling well enough. And I really feel like just having that time just to allow the brain to just calm down, allow the thought processes to calm down. It's a big, big thing to go through such a severe stomach infection and it really affects every single part of your being and I think just having that space and that time really helped me mentally to kind of come down from that really high stress and high alert state and it's allowed me to come back down and really centre and feel a lot better about everything. Stress and anxiety is something that I have trained in and I think that's also helped me along. What I'm going to do is put together some videos on how to handle stress, so stress management, anxiety management, and um, a little bit of uh, meditation, and maybe throw some affirmations in there as well. Things that can really help to try and keep calm and try and keep centered because it's, it's a lot to go through. Um, your body is going through an enormous amount of strain and it really, really helped me to heal and to calm down. So if that's something that interests you, then stick around. I'm really pleased that you came here to watch. I hope you've managed to get something out of this. Let me know in the comments, have you had H. pylori? Have you healed? Are you going through it? Are you unsure? Um, going back a few months, I didn't actually think that I would ever heal. And so I'm really excited and really happy and, and really, really pleased to say that I'm pretty much back to good health. I'm not 100%. Um, and so I don't want to sort of jinx myself or anything. But yeah, I'm really, really pleased that I feel a lot better. I'm able to eat what I want. I would say the only thing now is that the hunger pangs are just lagging a little bit. Um, but I think that will come in time. Um, if you have taken anything from the videos, please let me know in the comments. Um, hit the like button. Let's get this video out there to more people, uh, get more help to people, more reassurance and more support. And if you want to stick around for any future videos, then please hit the subscribe button and I will hope to see you very, very soon. Thanks for watching.